man. How are you? Good. Nice head, man. What's up? Thank you. I appreciate it. I got my Cobra pin. I like it. I like it. That's a that's a sick pin, man. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, yeah. very nice. Got it. I'll send you the link. It's seven bucks. Oh, really? You know, oh, no. uh, hello. Hello. Oh, my, my computer's saying hi. <laughs> hi. What's up, guys? What's up? Um, so I, I'm good. I'm good. Um, well, who do we got? Here? It just looks like a couple of y'all. Yeah, we got a couple doing the interview along with me. Some of my buddies, we're all like Cobra Kai super fans, and we're used uh, yeah. to the show too. So, like, we were psyched to see that you responded, which is awesome. Yeah, hell yeah, man. I love it. I love it. The Cobra Kai fans are the best. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, so I guess let's get right into it. So how did you like get the role of um Cruz? Well, uh, I have an agent here in Atlanta and uh, I get some pretty random auditions out of the blue and I had a couple coming up and I got I got this audition and I didn't really look at what it said too much <laughs> except for the lines. It said Cruz. <laughs> and I, I didn't read the name. I saw the word Cobra Kai real quick. And I was like, it didn't register right away. I was, <laughs> yeah, like, right. Something, I was like, something Asian, I think, real quick. And then I was like, and then the next day after I, I did my audition and I sent it in, I was like, wait a minute, that said Cobra Kai. <laughs> and I looked it up and I was like, I was like, it's, isn't that from Karate Kid? And then I went and I looked it up and I saw all this stuff talking about the shows coming out and I flipped. I was like, no way. Are you I know. Me? I was like, if I was like this one out of everyone, I got to get this one. This this is legendary. Yeah. <laughs> so this was the best. Um, That was like the best thing I that you ever got? Mm. Technically, yeah. I mean, I've got some pretty big stuff, and a lot of the auditions I've had are pretty large too. But this one was most meaningful to me. I mean, I'm on uh, the Tyler Perry show, Meet the Browns. Um, I auditioned for major shows like Walking Dead, uh, uh, movies like Breaking, uh, movies like uh, Super Bad back in the day. Oh, like, wow. Like I've had some pretty amazing auditions, um, but this one just stood out the most because it, it, I know how big it is to the world, to everybody, to myself even. I grew up, I grew up watching the Karate Kids since I was born. Yeah. Um, I did karate. I did karate and I'm sure it was influenced a lot because of the, sh of the because of the movies. Um, you know, everybody talks about Miyagi all the time and Daniel Sun <laughs> and everybody does the crane kick. And I'm like, to be a part of a legendary franchise like that would be a dream come true. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah, like I got the audition and like I'm freaking out for a couple of days waiting, hopefully to get a call. And five days later, I got the call and they gave me an offer right away without any callbacks or anything. And I was like, no way. <laughs> and I just like freaking ran around the house. I I was screaming in the streets like, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would That's do That's so cool. That's pretty cool. Knowing how big it is, I was like, I think my life just changed a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know, I've never, there's a lot, like the other shows I've been a part of and many of the things I've done myself, none have had nowhere near the, uh, the like growth and publicity and the fan base as Cobra Kai does. So I knew right yeah, I agree. It's 24 7, 365. Fans are talking about it. Yeah. Non stop. It's amazing. It's almost like, you know, the little show that could because originally, like, you know, nobody was expecting it to do as well as it did. And then I watched like the first I think it was the episode they had for free and so I watched it and I was like you know I'm a big Karate Kid fan I grew up one of my favorite movies the whole trilogy and so I see it with my dad I, it was actually right around when Infinity War came out and I saw a trailer for it in the theater oh, yeah I flipped when I saw that trailer yeah, I know and I was like dang 
it's pretty cool. So I went home that night. I watched the episodes and I was like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. I knew I was in love with it. Knew it was going to be like my favorite thing ever. So I ordered YouTube premium, watched the whole series. And it was just, man, it was amazing. Now I have another question for you. What was it like fighting Ralph Macchio? <laughs> did you do like your own stunts or did they have like a stuntman do that? I did. I did my own stunts. Oh, wow. Oh, well, no, the thing, no, what I meant to say is I have to learn the scene. I have to do the scene, multiple takes. I have to do the fight. I do the fight, but then they also have a stunt double that comes in to do a couple takes to really sell some of the punches because they want some of the punches with me to be like staged more. But then when they send in the, uh, then they send in the stunt double, they'll give them the real swing so they could really sell it. But when season one three episodes immediately blown away by that and then then season two comes around and they're like well uh, you're only going to be in one episode this time and i was like dang and then they're like but you're fighting ralph macchio and i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> i mean that's 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 it man. i mean <laughs> That's all I need. That's all I need to hear. Sign me up. <laughs> and you have a pretty, your character has a pretty big driving force in this show, especially with season two, which is kind of what get almost Miyagi-Do kickstarted with that fight. And just really, really cool. And, you know, you start off with the Robbie character kind of driving him and then you kind of play a big role into his turn like midway through um, season one where, you know, with the whole car dealership, where you, you and, um, what was the other characters? Trey. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Um, Trey, Trey and Cruz. Trey and Cruz. Trey and Cruz. Trey, yes. And, you know, you're trying to steal the car, and then Robbie fights you guys, and you guys win the fight, but then he sees the camera, so he points up to the camera, and it's like, you better watch your ass. You better watch. You better. Yes, yes. That was the best. He's like, you better watch your ass. And I was like, it was, it was funny when we did that scene. I accidentally said, you better wash your ass. The first take. And then <laughs> the whole everybody just starts laughing. I didn't mean to do it, but it was funny. But yeah, we are. You got a really great understanding of the character. Um, that is pretty much our placement in the show. Is we're to. We're to really drive that character of Robbie to show um, to show his dark past and like a little bit of where he wants to where he may want to get away from. And we just keep popping in to add this drama between him and the audience and the other characters. And, and you can see the dynamic between like, you know, I love it. Just. I'm like a punching bag in the show a little bit, you know, like yeah. even my own, even my own friend ends up punching me in the face in a fight scene. And, um, you know, like, uh, you know, then we get, you know, uh, William Zabka, Johnny makes fun of me and my mustache. Yeah, the mustache is like, what's that thing on your face? <laughs> and then, then I come back and my mustache is gone. You know, it's like, I got, I got insecure about it after that. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I had the mustache and in the audition, it says skinny guy with shaggy hair. They're going to be a skateboarder punk with a mustache. And I was like, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. And, right? And, oh, then, and then we filmed the scene. I think it's all first episode. And then I'm coming back for for the episode where the next episode where my face is shaved. <laughs> and the night before they tell me, shave your face before you come in. And I'm like, you sure? Like there's no go, there's no going back from that. Right, then you can't undo that once they're on not coming back. Um, so I'm I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but are you in season three? I can't, and I wouldn't answer that, but uh, I definitely recommend watching it. You're gonna love it. Um, I personally haven't got to see it, but I I I have talked with a lot of the other cast members, and uh, I do know. It's a really great season, and uh, let's hope let's hope Cruz pops in. Um, I, I I'm I'm hoping. Yeah. I would imagine the character of Cruz, what especially with everything the trailers revealed with Robbie being in jail and kind of going back to his past season one roots, I could really see it um going that way. Yeah, I have my desires and my theories of where I would like to see Cruz go. I think yeah. the audience likes to see some Cruz development as well. Um, 
you know, I don't never know even until the show airs what's in it and what's not. So, you know, they could, even if we did film something, it could hit the cutting room floor. And, yeah. you know, so it's never really even good to talk about things until it comes out. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited. And I know everybody else is too. So let's fingers <laughs> crossed. We got more crews. Crossed, and, you know, man. write all the producers. Tell them all. Let's get more crews in this oh, show. Tell them. Hurwitz. Yeah. Berg, um, yo, dude. I'll, I'll like some more crews in the show. They listen. They listen. So, you know, I could use all the support. I, would I, love I got that. you, man. I got I'd you. love to see some more development with uh, crews. You know, maybe. Yeah, I'll DM them later. Thanks. Maybe he starts writing. Maybe he starts doing some real dirty work for Cree for Crease, or, or maybe down the line he turns into a better person and starts <laughs> redeeming himself. No, I've got. I have, yeah. like, I have like kind of like a sort of theory. Yeah. Like, what is it? At the end of like season two, where like Crease is like training like, like half of the students on Cobra Kai. Like, what if Crease like opens like his own dojo? Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be cool. And I think because you've seen so far, you've seen like, you've seen William Zapp, you've seen Johnny make fun of me. You've, I've gotten in a fight with Ralph. Then I've also caused so much trouble with, um, with Robbie. So what about going with Crease? Like, you know, they, I need some payback. You know, I was, I could see me going and signing up with Crease to do some real dirty work. You know, that could be fun, but I don't know, you know. I only got theories, just like you guys. And <laughs> let's see where three, we'll see where season three goes, and where season four. And the good news is, is it looks like we're gonna have a lot more seasons than yeah. For I sure, because season- everyone loves it. Yeah, dude, I love it. I, I, I think it's been a solid eight times I watched both seasons, and I recently rewatched it um, with my friends and some of my family members who haven't seen it. And they were like, "This is the best thing ever." And then we watch one episode. They're like, "We gotta watch the next one because that's." I think the reason the show is so intriguing to people and it becomes so interesting and so intriguing is because, you know, you watch one episode and then it has this big cliffhanger and then it ties into the next episode. So it kind of makes you want to see what's going to happen next and where the story is going. And the other thing, too, is you think the story is going one way and then it goes another way. Yeah. I mean, as you like, like I said, in the other shows, some of them are uh, some of the shows I'm in as an actor, you're kind of like, cool. I'm in a great role. I'm getting paid. Um, yeah. But some of them, you're like, eh, but it's not my favorite show. But yeah. then when I watch this one, I'm like, yo, you got to watch it. It's so I, good. <laughs> it's I, I love to cook, personally. And it's the same thing with cooking. Like, I make some things. I'm like, this is all right. I'll make it again. But it's not the greatest. And I make other things. Like, my mouth's literally, like, full of fire. This is the most amazing thing I've ever eaten. And so... Uh, I love to cook too. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. Man. Uh, I have a question. All right, Darius, what is it? Um, like <laughs> when you're uh, like filming, like is there any like character that like or not character, just like person like in real life that like you feel like you're like close to, like you know, like that you have like kind of like a bond with, like 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 one when you're acting. Well, me and Terrell keep in touch. Terrell's Trey. We keep in touch all the time. He's he's lived in Atlanta locally. We've talked about doing other projects together. Sometimes I call him just to run some thoughts by. We keep in touch. And um, uh, Robbie, Robbie, when we're on set, the three of us are just horsing around all day. If we treat it like, you know, like Robbie's like my little brother when I'm on set. We just rag <laughs> each other. And he's a little smart ass. So. It's, it, we have fun. We, do, we jab each other back and forth. We are very much just like our characters. Um, we're just not up to no good like them. Like, you know, we're not stealing stuff. We're just, <laughs> we're just having a good funny time. Like, I like it. so Robbie's been pretty busy. I've talked to him a couple of times, especially when he comes back into Atlanta. Um, they had, they had this big um, interview, him and uh, him and uh, Mary. Oh, is it Mary? Is it Mary? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sam, Mary, Sam, Yeah, Sam. They had this big interview at this gigantic uh, Atlanta battle, um, this little, this big karate tournament that came to Atlanta. And so they had this big um, interview on, on like one of the main stages, like with a whole auditorium full of people. And one of the fans who I keep in touch with, he reached out to me and he says, are you going? And I was like, oh, I didn't know about it. Where is it? 
and I show up into the interview right into the back and I'm like, yo, Robbie. <laughs> and, and, then, and then they grab me and they pull me up on stage with them and sit me right next to them. And they're like, and then by the end of it, Robbie's like, he's like, I got a question. And this one's for you, Cruz. Well, he was like, why you always got to be so hard on me? I was like, why you got to be such a little snitch, bro? Like, you know, I just like, and the audience was laughing. And and then we all hung out for like the whole rest of the day, went and ate some food. And we went and we went up on top of the main stage of the karate show. It was such a great time. It sounds like such a fun job. Yeah, it really is. Acting is a wonderful thing. And when you get to be on set with a lot of fun people, it's even better, especially when they're of your age. I mean, we're not all the same age, but, you know, it's like we're we're all close enough that we all feel the same way. And then especially when you're on set with legends like William Zabkin, Ralph Macchio, you know, I'm having lunch with them, just talking. And <laughs> that must have been awesome. Sitting there with Chris, like Chris, William Zabka, Ralph Macchio, uh, Amanda, uh, Zolo, all of them just sitting in the same room, talking, eating, laughing, having fun. <laughs> And then you see all the success everybody's going through, and that makes it even more exciting to know that, wow, everybody's so cool, too, when they're, like, this big. Yes, that is, that's awesome. I mean, the way I see season three going, this is just a theory of mine, but, you know, obviously we see that Robbie ends up in the jail or the juvenile detention center. I think maybe, like, the people in there have some connections to Cruz and um, Trey, and then maybe that's why we see that him getting beat up by them because, you know, he has that reputation for being a stitch. So maybe it ties in that way. Yeah, he just was like, I always felt like he was just, he's in a way like ratting on us now. And, you know, so we gotta, there's, there's we always gotta keep coming back. We have got beef, you know, like we're out, if we're out there in the world. This guy's gotten us in trouble. He snitched on us. He's. <laughs> He's got us on camera. He's he doesn't go with the plan. We fight yeah. us. We gotta come back. We gotta get him. You know he better watch his ass. You know it's like for real. I love how we got left with that line. You know it was like oh okay we coming back for episode two, <laughs> and then now we get another fight. Like come on, we got we got, we gotta be like haunting them. We now gotta... I have another big question for you. I know. YouTube read, you know, they were going to do the season three, release it, make all the seasons free, and then they weren't going to do a season four. So how did that work out where, like, they canceled the show and then it went to Netflix? Like, how did that whole deal, like, work out? Well, it was very, it was a lot of news to all of us, too. We were kind of watching it along the way, like, God, when are they coming out with this? We know it's, we know it's done. But what happened with YouTube was they decided that they were going to pretty much discontinue doing the platform where they were going to be making shows. I think they might still have one or two, but yeah. they were going to end us. We weren't going to have any more seasons too through YouTube. So we're like, no way we want to find. And always from day one, everybody <laughs> wanted to get to Netflix. That yeah. was, that was yeah. the goal because, as, because as you saw, for about two, three years, I was telling everybody about it. And if you weren't a diehard fan, you didn't know what you were just, it was like in one ear, out the other. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm in the Karate Kid show, Cobra Kai. They're like, oh, cool. And I'm like, it's on YouTube. Go watch it. They're like, oh, it's not on Netflix. Ah, whatever. And I'm like, and then, and then it goes on to Netflix. Boom. And there isn't a place I go, a person I talk to that isn't like, oh, dude, it's Cobra Kai, dude. Like, no way. And I'm like, oh, now you know what I'm talking about. Like, now, now you know who I am. Now. That's how you think it's better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Netflix does, has worked us some wonders. And, uh, and I think we're going to see so much more coming from that. Yeah, I've heard discussions about spinoffs. Yeah, I heard that too, man. Huh. It'd be cool. One, yeah. hey, one time, one, one time, uh, Hayden, uh, he, uh, Hayden and John, they, they, um, and Josh, they, they put out a request on Facebook to all the fans to make a, uh, to make a Trey and Cruz movie poster. And so <laughs> I was like, I was like, hmm, I like where their heads at. I, I think that oh, yeah. the adventures of Trey and Cruz, that would be cool. Get into the criminal, uh, where does it take place? LA? No, is it Los Angeles? Yeah, it's a valley. Yeah. valley. So, yeah, Valley. So, you know, the adventures, the underworld, the criminal underworld with uh, Trey and Cruz. I'd like to also see... Like, That'd be so interesting. With Crease and, like, um, he talks a lot about the Vietnam War, so maybe... And I heard they do 
flashbacks in the new season. Um, well, and- they definitely did a little in season two, right? I think so, yeah. And I also cool. heard that Jesse Coe is going to be playing like young Crease and some flashbacks in the new I season. heard that too. I don't know who Jesse Cove is. <laughs> it's um Crease, the actor that plays Crease, Martin Cove, it's his son in real life. Oh, okay. That makes sense with the yeah, last Yeah, yeah. They okay. probably look alike. I always, I always joke that uh, Will Ferrell is actually uh, Crease's father in real life. <laughs> they, they look exact. <laughs> Great minds think alike, man. I always think the exact same thing. I was watching Elf just the other night, like for the Christmas season, and dude, that's I love Elf. That's a hilarious movie. I mean, I'm pers- yeah. It, what's his name? Um, John, uh, John Favreau also made that movie. That dude's yeah. done so well. He did the, you know, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. He's done uh, Iron Lion Man. King, Iron Man. Like, the dude's king right now. <laughs> dude. King of the uh, shows. What'd you say? Like, the king of the shows. Yeah. Oh, for <laughs> real. He knows how to do it right now. And you know what was amazing to me? Since, since Cobra Kai has gone, to, has gone to Netflix, we're seeing Cobra Kai up above listed above all like the top shows in the world i'm like what you know like these are my favorite shows and now this show is being listed number one above them i can't believe it it's 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 totally a dream come true and i really hope that uh the character does develop further into the show and then that you know branches out from this show to other movies and other shows too because we're seeing it with uh you know we're seeing it with the other characters you know Robbie's about to play a dude in She's All That. Like they're doing a She's All That remake movie. Which oh, really? I didn't, I've, I've never even heard of that, if I'm being honest. but it's a, It was like a movie where like the girl gets transformed into the prom queen. Well, they're doing it in reverse and he's like the girl, but he's the guy getting like turned into the oh. prom king or something. And that's... Oh, that's, that's, that's that, that movie actually, also has such a following, uh, especially amongst people my age, that it'll immediately be mainstream big time. And that's a lead role for him. Plus, he's been in things like Fuller House, um, a lot of different other shows. Yeah. Um, Tanner, I actually recognized him the first time I watched Cobra Kai. I actually knew him. He played, I think his name was Charlie Gardner on Girl Meets World, which is actually yeah. a spinoff of Boy Meets World, which is another one of my favorite shows, especially in that genre. And, oh, I, it was like, I knew he was a good actor in that, but obviously that's more towards like, geared towards like a kid show and see him, you know, like cursing and just yeah. getting up guys was very, very cool to me. Um, so yeah. yeah. Uh, really- and then you got, um, and then you got, of course, Tori's in a lot, a lot of stuff, and she, oh, you know, she's List, popping yeah. up into major movies too. Plus, her, plus her fan base is gigantic on the internet. Um, and then uh, Hawk, he's been in a number of things from yes. the Disney Channel. Yeah, no, Hawk. I think this was like um, Cholo's or Zoho. Is that how you pronounce it? I think. It's, uh, Oh yeah, Zoom just gave me a great notification that now we have limited time instead of 40 minutes. So. That's cool. <laughs> That's always good. Um, yeah, I think this is Zolo's first big role. You know, yeah. I, I had never I remember seeing him on set because I didn't get to meet him until I was there to shoot my scenes. And I'm like, who is that? I don't like, wait. Who, I'm like, he's the new guy. I don't even know who he is. <laughs> who is this dude, man? Yeah, I'm like, really? Okay. But he did great. He's done so great in the show. I really think he's just such a powerful actor in the show. And uh him and him and Johnny's dynamic is that's awesome. what makes the show, man. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's, that, it's so great because they're like the new little rock stars of the show. And then, you know, you go back to uh, Daniel's son and it's kind of like soft and like you're kind of not as excited. And then it goes back to Johnny and Zolo and you're like, yeah, this is more fun. This is more exciting. I like yeah. it better this, this time around. It's interesting how they twist like Daniel almost into the villain. And I've seen a bunch of things that's like Daniel's the villain in the Karate Kid, but I watched the Karate Kid and I'm like, Johnny is such a prick in that movie. He trips him. He pushes him off a cliff. He's beating him up. 
Yeah, well, like, like me, it's like Miyagi said in the Karate Kid, you know, no such thing as bad student, only such thing as bad teacher, student, teacher say, student do. Yep. It's true for everything, even like, especially like with me in school too, sometimes when I have bad teachers, I don't do as well in the class, but the better the teacher, the better I do in the class. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think it's about the teachers too, and not the students. Mm, so do you have any roles coming up? I know I've heard that like it's been a lot harder on the actors like doing auditions and on Zoom and stuff with you know the global situation. So any big roles coming up for you? Um, honestly, this year because of everything, I've only had three auditions total, and mm -hmm. I need to have more than that to really land the next role. Um, I think Cobra Kai is definitely going to give people a lot. Oh, and the other thing, Cobra Kai hadn't been released yet on Netflix either by the time I'd had those auditions. So right. I didn't really get the look from everybody oh, yet. Oh, right. So no one saw it. I mean. So now, now when I start to get auditions coming up in the next year, because production has gone back into action, they're doing films again. So, um, so we'll see. We'll see. I think that once, you know, they see my reel and they notice that, oh, he's Cruz from Cobra Kai. And they're going to be like, all right, yeah, let's give him a better look, which, um, you know, as of up until then, I've just been another face in the crowd and they got to, you know, they want to see some, they want to see that you've already done some stuff because then it really um, lets them know that I'm capable of doing it because somebody could do good in an audition, but if they don't have something under their belt, then it's riskier for a lot of people putting a lot of money into a production. So um, hopefully with this, they say that it's a big character in the show. They'll be like, all right, yeah, let's bring them over there. Well, I've only had three auditions this year, but they have been really good. The auditions are getting big, very big. Um, I'm getting the opportunities and hopefully they just land and that Cobra Kai helps me um, be looked at much better yeah i'll be i'll be telling the writers you know you gotta gotta give some backstory to cruise you know maybe have cruise uh as a kid give a little backstory of cruise and trey what are they doing uh cruise and trey spinoff i would like to see that i'd like to see a crease spinoff i'd like to see i don't know who, what other characters are there now here's my question to you um have you seen like karate kid two three next karate kid yeah absolutely oh no. yeah I mean, always growing up, I'd already watched all of them. Um, I rewatched a bunch of them as of late. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always loved the classic to begin with, the first one. Um, kind of the third one, kind of like, <laughs> yeah, kind of in and out. Like, I don't like, I had to rewatch it so I could really remember it again. I definitely remembered them going to uh, Japan and everything in two. And, yeah. I, and I remember the one with Hillary swank oh, and i'm I just can't like you know past 10 minutes of the hillary that's the worst <laughs> thing i've ever seen i cannot i tried watching it the other day because it came to netflix and i was like i'm not watching this karate kid 3 is what i like to call a fast food movie like it's really bad it's you know it's poorly made poorly and i don't want to say poorly edited but you know you just love to eat it up and eat it up again and again and eat it up even though you know it's bad for you you just keep breathing it in and taking it in because Thomas Ian Griffith, the dude screaming, he was like, yeah, I like it, I like it. And he's acting like a total psychopath, like he's on, and it's just crazy, crazy, off the walls, bonkers, that movie. And then you have Crease in the scene where like, he reveals to Johnny, he's like, ah, where are you going? And it's just like, a fun fact, I read this online the other day, the actual plan for that movie was Crease to do everything Terry Silver did, but um, Martin Cove's filming schedule, he couldn't be there to film that much of the movie. So that's why he got sent off to Tahiti and I guess temporarily killed off you know, parts of that movie. And so then they made the character of Terry Silver, who I'd like to see make an appearance just because like in the movie, like just because of the crazy way the movie is structured, like the movie isn't great, but the character of Terry Silver, I love. And Mike Barnes is also a character I enjoy on screen too. I know him from a soap opera I watch called um, General Hospital. So I'd like to see him on too. Yeah, Terry, you know, it's very interesting. I hear everybody's theories and everybody loves to talk about whose kid is whose. And they're like, <laughs> oh, you know, Tori must be Allie's daughter and all this stuff. And I was like, out of every one of them, when my face is shaved and my hair was a little longer, I was like, bro, 
How come nobody thinks I'm right Terry here, Cruz? Cruz? How am I ta- Terry Cruz's son? It makes too much more sense. Yeah, I mean, he's a bad guy. He has, he's like a very bad, shady dude. It, it makes so much sense. They it just, would be more like, it would be more like cool to give more reason to our character. Like, oh, and by the way, that little street rat, that's Terry Cruz's kid. You know, that I thought was a pretty good idea, but. That's a good idea. They should have, want, well, I'm, I'm thinking about this now in my head. I'm like, that's a genius idea. Why don't they, they do that? Like, I, my face is shaved and I have a ponytail. It, it it's like uncanny um i even sent in, i even sent them a picture one day with the faces side by side and they were like oh this is cool this is a good idea but we'll see because the thing is is i talk to the i talk to the directors the writers and everybody and i give them my theories and you see i cut my hair just a little bit but it's not that much shorter it's you know i told him i was like by the time we get to season four you know my hair will be a little bit longer again it'll be closer and I could add some stuff to it if we needed to, but, and, you know, like we'll talk about our theories and stuff. And every time until the season is written and done, there's no guarantee that my character is going to be back in this, in, you know, in this episode, yeah. that doesn't mean that he won't be in the next episode, next season, even because the story is developing so much more that we're bringing in more characters from the past, you know, there's a lot more depth that goes on that if, like you said, Trey and Cruz are the driving force for Robbie's trouble. Yeah. So unless we bring Trey and Cruz into another angle, you know, it can, you know, we've got to, it could possibly not be every, every episode. And so that's totally fine because the story's developing and getting broader, especially with the show's success. We're bringing in, uh, chosen we're bringing we that go to japan you know cherry silver could come in and then that's going to take multiple episodes to develop so right there has to like i feel like there has to be a clear reason like it should just be like here's terry silver here you go uh you know here he is why not you like him like there should be a clear narrative that they kind of build up all season teasing it like will they won't they kind of tension and you know cobra Kai's my favorite show um, and movie out of everything but I only have one complaint with it which is the same exact complaint I have with the Mandalorian that and I heard that season three this isn't like you know like they kind of fixed this which was my only this is nitpicking like it's a very small like this big of an issue for me but it's the same thing with the Mandalorian where like the episodes are structured where like it's kind of the soap opera story, but like every episode's its own tale. Like it all has one narrative, but every episode its own tale and there's a string kind of holding it together. I guess I kind of like where, you know, it's like every episode builds on top. I don't know if you've seen a show like All American, but like, or like a show where like it picks up right where the last one left off, like with the exact scene where- Yeah, I understand what you're Yeah, I mean, it's a very small like- I understand what you're saying that I don't really care about, but- yeah. Like, I, I feel you. Everybody's got their preference in that. Yeah. It has been a lot of shows that do it like that this this nowadays, and especially with The Mandalorian, because The Mandalorian was often a different director every episode. Yeah, so it's a different so, narrative. That's yeah, the only. Especially with season one, that one was done by a totally different director for each episode because they wanted to give it a different feel each time. Um, like even one of the directors was director of Thor Ragnarok. Uh, I saw a YTT, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so when we get when we talk about Cruz again, it's like I think that Cruz has no matter how long this this show goes on, I feel like Cruz has become such an actual character in the show that even if he has to leave for a couple seasons, he's gonna come back in the climax. Yeah, you know? he's, he's got like, him. He needs to do something. And so, because it would be more of like, yeah, he's back again. You know, that's also why I like to keep it until the show's out, no matter what's happening. I like to keep the mystery because that's how the audience looks at it. Whenever their favorite character pops back in, it's exciting. You know, like what's his name, the uh, fish ditch guy, he Kyler. He wasn't in the last season. Oh yeah, but now we know he's back in this season, so and he's joining Cobra Kai, exciting. which is like what. Well, I we think we don't fully know, do we? I mean, it looks like it. it looks I like mean, he might be getting his ass kicked. I don't know. You know, he who's the guy that Hawk is beating up? Like, who's that guy? I don't know. I, 
Maybe. I don't know what Dimitri would be doing in the Cobra Kai dojo, though. And I hear this is Dimitri's best season. Everyone yep. says, like, Dimitri's this annoying character, but he, he, in season one, I get where that's coming from. But even then, I still think he's funny. But in season two, they build him up and they build up his story. And then my... One of my favorite moments in the finale is when Dimitri kicks Hawk. He's like, boom. And then he sends him through the glass trophy case. And that, that's just such a feel-good moment. And then, of course, right after, we have Miguel getting thrown <laughs> off the staircase. So, didn't last yeah. feel good. But, have, you know, we seen the spoiler that, have we seen a spoiler that shows Dimitri kissing the blonde girl? Yes, yes. I, mean, we, I, saw, I saw a picture of that. I'm like, what is this? Is this real? I know, I saw that. And she has like this hat on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's her, right? Dang. That's too many spoilers, I think. I like it I, when it's total mystery. Yeah, no, I'm trying to like stay. I saw that one actually, but I'm trying to stay out of the spoiler. You're like trying to. Because the trailer isn't going to make us Twitter. watch it. We're already going to watch it. So stop showing us small things because we're going to watch it. It's one thing when you haven't seen something and you watch the trailer and you're like, hmm, oh, this looks like it'll be good. We exactly. know it's going to be good and we're going to watch it. So stop spoiling it. Dude, I saw a clip and they released, they teased the clip the other day and it was a really cool clip. And Chris, he, he's calling Daniel and Amanda on the phone. And then somehow there's snakes but like all over the car dealership. And then it reveals that Louie and Anusha are back, which is interesting because season one, Louie's fired. Season two, Anusha. He's family, so he'll pop back in, you know? Yeah, and I was thinking when I watched this, you know, maybe like Chris somehow hired like Cruz and Trey to release the snakes. Um, you never know, right? Right, right. One theory I have... Uh... Or no, not theory. My favorite part of the trailer was when Amanda slaps Kreese. Daughter of Kreese. I ah, that's what you think. I've, I've seen that all over the place. No way. No way that one's happening. Like everyone says it. Like there's no it's way. so far fetched. Like that's the kind of thing that you would tell your husband, especially if she knew about Kreese. Because I'm sure he's talking we, about And we've Chris. never seen like an ominous look from her. You know, there's yeah. never. If that was the case, they would have had to pre-develop uh, that with yeah. some for, with some foreshadowing, with a random look or a random statement. There hasn't been none of that, so it ain't happening. <laughs> um, yeah, Amanda Daniel divorce is another thing I've heard. I I can see that how they built that up, but I, I don't. That'd be a lot. That'd be a lot because as of right now, what has happened that's divorce worthy? Um. <laughs> I feel like uh, Amanda and uh, Daniel divorcing <clears throat> leads to my theory about season three. Like maybe like Daniel will still be like doing Miyagi Do, but in like secret. And then like oh, uh, Amanda uh, just catches him in the act, and then they're like gonna get divorced. And then yeah. and then maybe like the whole uh, Japanese girl thing could maybe can maybe make things awkward amongst them who knows that's a, you know it's possible that down the line some stuff can happen as of right now there's not and there just hasn't been enough for it so until we watch it it's all just random theories i i want it i want it i want friday like it cannot get here soon enough i've i watched second season the day it dropped and i been waiting and waiting and waiting. I followed the news. Hurwitz said on Twitter, oh, it's going to be out end of the summer. He said that's what he thought, though, so I understand where that's coming from. And I was like, yes, yes. And then the end of the summer comes, like, 2021, Cobra Kai. The trailer drops with it revealing it's going to be on Netflix. I'm like, seriously? And I have to wait, like, six months? Really? <laughs> but it, I've heard it's worth the wait. I guarantee it will. Hopefully, fingers crossed, all um, we get season four, summer of 2021. I'd say that might be a little too close, but I think we could have it by maybe fall because normally, okay, so normally the timeline has been they're writing it and it's usually done writing middle. They start writing at the end of the uh, start of the new year. Then they usually would finish about middle summer or a little April, start production around August. And then we were done usually by November, December. Mm -hmm. Then the show would, or no, then the show would air in April. Yeah. And then they would write. No, it would actually go like that. They would, the show would, it, it would air because all the editing would be from the New Year's. 
and then release in April, and then they would do the writing and then starting production about you know, about August, September. So, so you know, then re airs in April. So, but we're already he's almost done writing it. So, oh wow. So he's almost done writing season four already. So that's really good news that the show hasn't even aired yet and they're almost done. So then they can start production almost right away. That is big news. So that, yeah, I mean. If it's six months to nine months, I'd see another release because it's going to take, it's going to take, you know, four to six months to film a whole season. Right. With the, And that's with, you know, and after they got to do the production and whole editing deal, get everything into place but i i, I can't even like put so if we started if we started filming in the next two months give it six months from now we're done shooting and then what another three four months so june july august september october you know right i think that'd be a good prediction if we start shooting almost right away but i think we will because of the weight <laughs> now which you said you haven't seen season three yet, right? No, but some I, I have talked to some of the cast members who have watched it. Okay, so now out of season one and two, which one is your favorite season and which one's your favorite episode? Um, well, I mean, I can be biased that, you know, in season one, I was in more episodes, so I like watching it more. <laughs> um, and in season two, I think fighting Ralph Macchio is just epic and creative. Yeah, it's like, amazing. But I loved how in the end of season one, Crease was revealed. Um, I love I thought that. That was like the coolest intro. Yeah, I remember seeing like, that. The story has just begun with his cigar. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Now you see the real stories on, and like the cliffhanger, um, season two's cliffhanger, like it's it's a big tease, but like the wet, like the exit, like it's a huge tease, but the execution is like someone just got a notification on their phone, like Ali, right? Yeah, it was Ali. It's like Ali Mill Schwarber has sent you a friend request, which is like I, I'd expect yeah. her to be. If they, you know, for them putting that in there, they already had to have had some sort of pre talks with Ali. Like, yes. Uh, no way to, why would you foreshadow that if she's not kind of if she hasn't said she'll come back? And plus, she's acting right now, so she's an actress. She was in The Boys. She's in a lot of movies, right? Shows and movies right now. So yeah. I don't see why she wouldn't agree to come back. Doesn't exactly. make sense. Tom um, Ian Griffith, he's like completely off. Who plays Terry Silver? He, I've heard like he's not really active on social media, but I can still see that. Old, yeah, and <laughs> you know. I want uh, Anthony LaRusso. I don't remember the name of the actor who plays him. I'd like to see him have a good art because he's always just this annoying little kid in the background. And so. Oh, yeah. Have you seen what he looks like now? Yeah, he lost a lot of weight. It's cool. I saw him. I saw him in person and I was just like, did they clone you and mess up a little bit? Because you're a totally different person. No, he, looked so <laughs> he was so weird. nice. He's so nice. Like he's just, he was just this humble little kid on set. I think that his character is very great for the show because it really, it's like another driving character for um, other people's development. Like he yeah. show, he really shows you where um, LaRusso is in his life, that he's gotten to a place where his son is forgotten his, this whole place. Like he's out of touch with the kid. The kid is a spoiled little brat. That's how rich they are now that he can be that spoiled and like that, you know, I get it. So hopefully, hopefully like, you know, maybe we get to see him learn some stuff and uh, come around as a human and be a little better because his natural personality is, is just too sweet. He's such a nice kid. And but, I want to see Stingray. I, I need Stingray this season. You need to watch Stingray. I, I well, need Stingray. Stingray was crazy to me because we were supposed to be pretty comedic relief, but then they throw him in and I was like, oh, well, he's the real comedic relief. And <laughs> all through the steps of the process, like, you know, especially with season one, we come in and we film, but we're all learning where it's going to, like how it's going to look. You know, we are told how we're supposed to direct, how they, we get directed, we're told how we're supposed to act, but then I watch it again and I'm like, you know, I could have made that even more funny right. instead of instead of making it more realistic and sinister. But at the same time, you learn that, you know, Cruz's character 
is supposed to be more sinister that you're supposed to be like i don't you know either i don't like this guy or i like him because he is like a little he is a little badass or or you're just like i want to kick his ass too because you know he's just running around up to no good but you know i hear people talk i hear people talk about my character and they're like oh he's such a punk i want to i want to beat him up too but then you hear that about kyler and then you know i hear that about robbie too and you yeah, know it's so many mixed reviews throughout the whole world and that's just really cool too because people are coming fans are coming from all over the world and there are other and all around the world is different cultures so different cultures see things in different ways right. yeah but um i'd say yeah the fight scene in the end of season two was epic um that was, that was so big and then watching him fall off you're like i did not see this what, coming. Yeah. I've seen it so many times and like still seeing it. I'm like, what just happened? I've seen it, saw it eight, nine times now. And I'm like, what <laughs> just happened? I'm so pissed I wasn't there on that episode just Ooh. to be, be around. Because just even offset, just to watch it make, be made. Because his, Zolo's, Zolo's um, um, stunt double is my stunt double as well. Oh. Uh, so he just puts a wig on for me. Um, <laughs> but, but apparently, so... The stunt double actually made that fall. Oh, really? He did the fall in regular speed with no pads on the floor. What? So, so he could have ended up like Miguel in real life. Oh. He cracked a rib. He, he so cracked why would anybody on the production team allow that? Because that's what they do. They're stunt doubles. Well, yeah. They really do, they they really do have, some crazy things. But they some type of pad. But he, he, I guess it was up to him. I guess he made that choice. But he didn't like ruin his rib. But he did it. He cracked it just a tad bit. He says. Um, but other than that, my other favorite scene is when um, Robbie. I mean, when Zolo and Johnny are talking, and Johnny breaks down the past and tells him about about his his relationship in season one with what happened with him and. Uh, oh yeah, you get that kind of st- because like you know, Karate Kid's all of daniel's way and then you get right. to, like, just laughing and like oh wow what a twist never what a twist. thought about it like that i so never that- thought about it this way and the cool thing is the cool summer song when they go back to school in the karate kid after summer when they go back to school it's the same song playing in the background the same way with the school bus driving by the same kind of cut sequence and, and the new version of it was sweet dude, like the, the new, version, like, the new version at the end the dark it's a girl. It's a girl. That's I've listened to that so many times. Whenever the teacher in school is like, you know what, you can go off, listen to some music. That's the song I'm listening to, man. That is Yeah. I, I even sent it to one of my producer friends. I'm like, you need to start making some stuff like this. Right. This is sick. Because he once did a remix too that where it was kind of like that, but it was uh that old Nirvana song. Um, anyways, it was a Nirvana song and he did something like that. And I'm like, dude, do it like this. We're redo this one so much better. This is so cool. <laughs> but you know, the show's been great. And the show's been great to me. And I think the show's been great to the fans, even though it's been dragging out the release. <laughs> so annoying. But we're getting it Friday, man. I'm gonna I'm it's my uncle's birthday Friday, his big 60. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I'm going to go out, have a nice dinner, um, get a good night's rest. Well, the 31st is his birthday. And so he's a Cobra Kai fan too. So, you know, we're going to, I'm going to go to sleep next morning, wake my dad up super early, early at the clock, and um, just wake him up and we're going to binge the whole season. That's the game plan. My mom said she wanted to watch it and invite my uncles over and have like Japanese food. And I, I'm not a fan of like, you know, I'm a very picky eater, so I don't like like Japanese or like Chinese food or anything. So I said, well, Cobra Kai takes place in America. Let's have hamburgers and mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm going to be the guy that stays up till 3 a.m. and binges it while you're asleep. <laughs> I, 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 I want to do that because, like, it's New Year's. I'm going to be up to watch the ball drop. <laughs> and then I'll watch it again the same day. <laughs> I have – so, basically, this is my schedule with Cobra Guys. So, first up, I'm going to watch it with my dad, binge through it right when it comes. Then I'm going to have to watch it with my mom – because she's a big Cobra Kai fan, too. So I'm going to watch it with her, the whole thing. Then I'm going to watch it with my uncles. And so – and then I'm going to watch it, me and my friends, like at night we do, like we play it all at the same time and sing. So I'm going to do that. And then I have another friend who has like a bonfire outside um, with a like 
TV out there. And then he wanted to watch it. So I'm going to watch it then. And then I'll probably watch it a second time on my own. So that's, we got six watch throughs of season. Oh, three. man. <laughs> so, Love it. Know. Love this it. I, I could literally you space it out so we can like stay number one forever. You know. I know you got you got to stay number one. Oh man, we almost broke all the records. We were so close, but we were definitely like number one show of the year. I can't. <laughs> what else was? I'm pretty sure. I mean, uh, I've seen it in the ratings that are that we uh, Cobra Kai was like the number one show of the year. The biggest thing, YouTube, I mean, so much. I, I can't believe to be a, like, I'll be driving around and it'll hit me in the head. I'll be like, dude, you're in the number one show in the world. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, I'm pretty, that must have been pretty cool for you, man. It's an incredible realization and just an honor all around. <laughs> I'm so thankful that, um, that, you know, John, Josh, and Hayden took, took a, you know, took me in and, have been so open and honest and communicative with me and just been such real cool rock stars. Um, I'm just, it's a blessing and I'm just thankful for everything that's come, on, come the way. And uh, it's been real great, like, you know, getting to talk to fans like you guys. It's, uh, I love it. It's so much, it's so great to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Thank and, you for coming on, man. I really appreciate this. Hopefully the interview does good numbers for my channel. So I really. Yeah. Is it like a, for your YouTube or something? Yeah. Yeah, man. Really trying to grow it out. So thank oh. you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. I think. The Absolutely. It's an honor. And I will just get that blasted all over all the Facebook groups and I'll share it with mine too. Thank you, man. Hey, put a little clip on my Instagram too. I want people to see it. I love you. I love you. I love it, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you coming on, man. I think it's a very good interview. You know, um, I Cruz and Trey, hopefully, fingers crossed for that spinoff. Hopefully, I'll see you in season three, if not season four, five, six, maybe so on. You know, see, hey, yeah, give shouts out to all the let the let the creators know. Man, I'll know, I'll spam their Twitter up, man. Spam them, <laughs> spam them to, to uh, get you back on the show, man. I'd like to see the Trey and Cruz show, like that would be something that would actually interest me, like with the spin off that i'm hearing they're doing i'd, I'd love to see it man because you know I, they listen to us and everything yeah. There's ways, yeah there's so many ways to involve the karate world into it too like and just like you know we could see maybe the spin-off behind the scenes of what goes on with us behind the scenes of at the cobra kai show like yeah that would be cool like a b like a bts thing would be cool where like you see what goes on behind the scenes or even having like a reality show called cobra kai bts and then maybe you know, somewhat scripted and you have all this drama and then you have like um, Jolo and Tanner just getting into fights in real life and having well, even, like even like the twist spinoff, like how they did with Johnny, you know, like yeah. now all of a sudden we see the good side of Johnny, you know, like maybe there's like this other good thing going on or like reasons why Trey and Cruz have gone the wrong path. I would love to see that and see like why they took this path. I'd, I'd like, well, I guess and maybe they're actually real good guys maybe your characters are your characters you ca your characters are older than Robbie right not really playing like the teenager yeah it's un it's, it's an undisclosed age we don't know but I've been hanging around high school kids for too long that's the truth in the show like you know I could be 20 I could be 21 right. I could be 24 I could be totally way out of line for hanging out with kids you know, you know high school kids uh yeah you know. I mean the reason I was asking that question is because I know Robbie's in the juvenile center so maybe like somehow you guys end up in there or maybe even we see Robbie in the juvenile center and we see you guys turned your life around in like a scared straight program and then you have to scare straight Robbie yeah be a cool concept for I got my fingers crossed that you know Tori and Cruz hit it off. Tori and Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it. I totally could see that happening. She's the bad girl. She is bad. Yeah, I could see her. I, I heard that like the Cobra Kai kids are doing some real messed up stuff this season, like being really, really bad. Getting into some, seems like gonna get getting into some big crimes. So you could definitely see them having, you know, crimes with you, which is just it's, it's exciting, man. I'm so excited. I sleep so good every night. And the main reason for that is Cobra Kai. So I'm like, Cobra Kai's coming. And then after, I'm still going to sleep good because it's coming back. Season four is coming. Uh, you know, it's just so, so exciting. It's awesome. It's such a, it's so cool to turn on Netflix and see, see it. <laughs>
Like, yeah, I don't think I'm ever gonna watch next Karate Kid. Like, ever. It's a dream come true. <laughs> oh yeah, I also was meaning to say that I really liked the second Karate Kid. Um, and I thought yeah. it was pretty cool because there was a near death experience in it. Like, you know, I was never ready for that. You know, like he's oh, ready yeah. to. He's ready to, and it ties back to the first scene in the movie where he goes uh-huh, to Crease and then he yeah. live or die, man, live or die. And he's like, die. And then he's like, wrong. And they're like, ah, uh-huh. and then the movie just ends. I always like I get so frustrated with that because I'm like, well, you can't just end. Like it's like uh uh-huh. <laughs> on the screen and like the bold title, it's like the end. And I'm like, <laughs> Is there a post credit scene or something? And that just picks up in the next movie. Um, just like they're coming home from Okinawa. And so hopefully maybe some of that gets resolved. And like, it seems like from everything I've heard, Chozon's gonna be like a good guy in the new season. But this this is a guy. And the whole plot line of Karate Kid 2 is that Chozon wants to kill Daniel and fight him to the death. So I don't know why you'd want to go back. There. That's why I think the twist is like what they did with Johnny, like that Chozen. now. Now we see that Chosen has like gotten zenned out and uh, has changed and wants to help him because he 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 regrets his old past self. You know, maybe he is sensei like and he's peaceful. Hopefully, man. Hopefully. Although we see that one shot, isn't there a picture of him doing that to to um? Oh yeah, there is a picture where he's holding the hand to Daniel and he's like, uh. so maybe that's when Daniel first comes to Okinawa and he's like beating him up and then Kumiko's like, stop guys, no, 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 don't do this. Yeah, maybe I heard, but I saw that one scene with Kumiko and him at the t- at the table eating. Oh yeah, And then right. it, it ends with that she could show him something to, in place of, and I'm thinking that's when they might introduce him. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. What I we'll see. They leave, they leave us all in the dark. Unless you're in the scene, you don't know anything else until. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's smart. This way, it doesn't get spoiled because one thing I absolutely cannot stand with shows or movies is like knowing what's going to happen. Like, um, with The Mandalorian, like I knew how it was going to end because I saw something before. No um, way. You knew about who was about to show up at the end? Oh, yeah, Mandalorian, yeah, with, I was like, I mean, it was still, like, a big reveal and cool. Oh, I think um Darius had a, a question. I think he wanted to know, who do you root for, Miyagi-Do or Cobra Kai? In the... I'm enjoying Cobra Kai a lot more, but, uh, you know, I... And, like, season, it's, like, one and two, like, who are you, like, as, like, what do you... I think I'm with everybody in the same way that it's, like, a little too yuppie, and I like the fun edginess and fun side of know, like, good like good like kind of in the show so it's like everyone kind of has like their different views yeah because he's like i don't know he's a little little the like yuppie and a little corny for me now as an adult you know like maybe when i was younger that was totally cool i like i was always miyagi though as a kid but nowadays i'm a little more edgy yes I, I, and i'm so i'm like uh, I, I don't know if I could have been so soft and been a Miyagi Do guy this age, you know. So, <laughs> um, I I would have joined the Cobra Kai. Yeah, dude. I'm, I I'm very much like Johnny. Like, the, that's what yeah. I love. I what they do with it because it's like Miyagi Do is kind of annoying. Robbie does this horrible thing, but at the same time, Hawks being this horrible, awful bully. And Tori has this knife bracelet where she's trying to like stab someone in the school. So it's like. Who do I root for? Like I'm, I'm rooting for Johnny because some. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm rooting for Johnny I because just... the only, the only reason the school fight really takes place is because I guess Daniel kind of thinks, oh, you know, he's kind of having a bit of PTSD with Cobra Kai, and he's like, I need to, to take Cobra Kai down, and like that starts a rivalry because he's telling them, oh, Cobra Kai is awful, and so now there's this big rivalry which ends in that big school fight. And you see that like, there's so much good in Johnny and he's getting there. He's getting yeah. to a great place, but he's still cool. Like, you know, whether or not you think that J- Daniel is, is, is a good guy or not, he's just not cool. Like, you know, like, so Johnny is cool as hell. And, um, yeah, and you Daniel's see that he's becoming a good or better person. And you see that he's teaching the kids well too. Like Zolo showed mercy. The fight was over and, yeah. 
And then, you know, Robbie just caught up in his own frustration, couldn't tell what was happening, turns around and kicks him while his guard's up, and that flies him over the balcony. If he, <laughs> if he was still fighting, he would have been able to hold his stance, but right. he was not ready for that turnaround kick. So, you know, I think, I think Johnny's my man, and he's doing great, and I can relate to him, and, uh, and it's just been a real cool, fun time watching his character. <laughs> I agree, man. So uh, I think those are all the questions I have, but thank you so much for coming on, man. This was amazing. I really appreciate you, you know, responding back so quickly, you know, allowing us this opportunity to interview you it means a lot, man. And I'll, once the video is uploaded, done with, you know, editing and all that stuff, I will uh, definitely um, share it with you. All right. Please do. It's been an honor. And um, thank you very much. I appreciate all of you guys. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Virtual fist bumps around. Yep. Thank you so much. You're so cool. <laughs> thank you. Remember and remember. Yeah, other fist bump. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Dad. All right. Remember. Just, just remember. You better watch your ass. All right, man. <laughs> hey, what's that thing on your face? And remember, guys, over Kai. Never dies. Never dies. Never dies. I don't know. Bye. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. Bye.